Every woman will come to an antenatal unit for at least two scans during pregnancy to pick up any problems. When a complication is detected, mums need to come in more regularly. And for some, it becomes their daily routine. At the University Hospital in Cardiff, there are a number of specialist clinics, caring for the most serious maternal and fetal cases across South Wales. Sarah Benden is a specialist midwife on the antenatal day unit. Lee is 33 weeks into her first pregnancy. I feel like a whale. You're not too bad. Oh, I'm fine. Lee has been coming in every day for the past two weeks due to concerns over her baby's growth. Lee uh, is known to have a small baby. Um, and then we keep an eye on our small babies with movements, making sure mums are happy. The scans that Lee's having as well helps to give us an idea of the health of the baby as well. Because we don't know what's causing it, whether it is just genetic that she is carrying small babies, or if it could be that she is growing a small baby because the placenta is not functioning, or the cord isn't functioning, or something isn't getting through that needs to get through. Um, I would say my pregnancy has been quite difficult. It's not something straightforward like what everybody else thinks. It's not just finding out that you're pregnant. Go for your data scans and then just pop up, pop the baby when it's after 40 weeks. It just doesn't go that way. Babies born before 37 weeks are considered premature and there are concerns that if Lee's baby stops growing, it'll need to be delivered early. The longer we can keep a baby in utero and keep them where they need to be and where they're nurtured as much as we can, then we do. But if anything changes over the next couple of weeks, if the growth stops, we would need to take the baby out in order to save the baby. There you go, Lee. Today, the baby seems to be fine and will be scanned again tomorrow. All right, then. Thank you. Take care. All right, see you tomorrow, then. ta da Lee. Ta -da. Well, it is nice to send them home and know that they are another step closer to term. I mean, for Lee, she's, what, 33 weeks now, so she's got four weeks to go. Four weeks of a battle, possibly, but, you know, at least we know that we can, we're can. we here for her. And it does feel good. It's, it, there is a lot of job satisfaction, I think is the word, to, to know that we're able to help these pregnancies through. Helen Jane is a midwife practitioner. Hello, how are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm all right, yes, thank you. Every day, she visits different departments of the hospital where expectant mums have been admitted. Well, I'm coming over to see um, one of our antenatal ladies. Her name's Carly Harris. She's having a third baby, and she's um, a patient in coronary care at the moment. So I'm just coming over to do a tracing of the baby's heart. Carly is 32 weeks pregnant, but was rushed in last night with extreme heart palpitations. Hello there, it's Carly, yes? yes. We haven't met before, I'm Helen, I'm one of the labour ward midwives. I've come over to do a tracing of the baby's heart. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. Right. And are you feeling the baby move? Yeah, she's really Lots well, of movements. Yeah. Well, it's a girl, is it? It's a girl, yeah. What do you have at home? I've got two boys. Two boys? 12 and 6. Oh, that's really good. Yeah. Excellent. OK. There she is. So what are the names of your two boys? Levi and Jaden. Ah, right. Because he's going again. Yeah, don't worry. Try and ignore those, those alarms if you no. can. I know it's hard, isn't it? A normal heart rate during pregnancy is 85 to 90 beats per minute. My heart rate went up to 199 last night. Like, I can't really catch a breath. No. Because it's like chest pain, mm. so I thought, because my heart was going so fast, her heart would be racing. No, her heart is, is lovely, actually, very good. So you didn't have these problems with your first no, two? No, not my two all. boys. Must be thinking with girls. Must be. Trouble seeing <laughs> I have trouble Aww. with this one. Don't worry now, don't worry. <laughs> Right, I think we can probably take that off okay, now. Yes, it's absolutely fine. So no worries about baby no so No worries about baby. Okay. No, great. 
Okay, see you tomorrow, Thank Carly. You, bye. Take care now. Bye bye. Carly has been known to the cardiac team since childhood, and after her last baby, was advised not to get pregnant again. Well, basically, um, I was born with a congenital heart defect. Um, all of, it was back to front, all of four chambers, upside down, inside out. So obviously, obviously a lot of surgery had to be done in Great Ormond Street from a baby. So um, as soon as I was like three months, they did me the first op, and then it was four, they did the second op, and then obviously when I was 11, they did a third op in the Heath. Honestly, you know, since I've had my last surgery, this is the only bit of trouble I've had since, I've, it was since I was 11. Working alongside Helen and overseeing Carly's obstetric care is consultant Dr. Claire Francis. Hi, Carly. Put this round a minute. I just wanted to come to say hello today, really, and have a chat and catch up. You know, when we saw you in the beginning of the pregnancy, we were all fairly positive and optimistic that this pregnancy would go the way the other two went because your two first babies were, you know, considering you've got a major heart problem, were quite straightforward really, weren't they? And we were hoping that things were going to go the same. And unfortunately, probably the stage of your pregnancy, the fact that your heart isn't quite normal and being pregnant on top has just pushed you into this extra sort of fast rate with all the palpitations that you're getting. I suspect it's not necessarily going to go away completely until you've had your baby. I know exactly, yeah. But I think it is going to be a case of waiting to see over the next few days whether the medication does the job or whether we're going to get to the stage when you become unwell again. Yeah. Hello, Anthony. Clifford Ned Midwife speaking. How can I help you? Well, Amelia is 32 weeks pregnant with her second child. Everything was normal until three weeks ago she developed an unusual liver disorder that causes severe itching. Jamila? Hello. Hi, yeah. You all right? Yeah, not too bad. How are you? Far corner. Yeah, I know. I never sit there usually. It's so hard to hear anything. Let's have a little look. It's a condition that affects fewer than one in a thousand pregnant women. Jamila has obstetric cholestasis, which is an itching problem in pregnancy. Um, it's characterised, obviously, by the itching, more so with palms of hands, soles of feet, and worse at night. She's had it before, so unfortunately for her, she knew what was coming. The itching did kind of get worse towards the end of my last pregnancy, but it was summer last time as well. This time around, I recognised the symptoms, so I thought I'd better call up. A developing baby relies on the mother's liver to remove bile acids from the blood. Anything with a bile acid over 40 is classed as severe. Hers were 59 last week. If uncontrolled, there's a risk of fetal distress and premature birth. So we can take you off now because that looks beautiful. OK, thank you. OK, can you manage? Yeah, no. thanks, Sarah. No worries. Thank take you. care. See you later. See you next week. This time round, when I knew I had it again, and I knew, as soon as I felt that itching, I knew what it was. I even considered not reporting it for a while, because I just didn't want to face all this again. Jamila's previous pregnancy turned out fine, and she and her husband, Mark, now have a healthy two-year-old son, Bruce. It seems to be uh, exclusive to pregnancy and vanishes just like that as soon as you give birth. Um, from what I understand, they don't really know why it happens. It's not the itching itself that's the problem. You can handle that. It's what the itching represents. And, you know, we just want to make sure that the baby's healthy, so. In hindsight, I realised how lucky I was that Bruce was fine and that I have a healthy baby and that, as much as possible, everything was, was perfect. Um, so, in a sense, this time round, being far less naive, I'm much more worried about actually what the risks really are and what this condition means. Next on Midwife Helen's Round is another woman in coronary care. Alison is 35. She's pregnant with her third child. Two weeks ago, thought I had a cold, thought nothing of it, a bit worn out, thinking I was just like 
constant fluent to find out that he was obviously a lot more serious than that. 29 weeks pregnant, Alison was rushed into hospital with pneumonia and chest pains. Alison has a rheumatoid heart disease. Um, which is a disease of the valves in the heart. This is about as serious as it gets with structural heart disease and pregnancy. Um, the condition that Alison has is very complicated and very advanced, and women die of this in pregnancy. Until this pregnancy, Alison's heart problems hadn't been detected. So something she's had for a very long time, just that it, the degree of heart disease wasn't as bad when she was younger so she got away with her first two pregnancies without any problems now that it's got a bit worse as is the natural history of this condition she's just got to the point where her body doesn't have reserves left to take her through this pregnancy in good health for the last three weeks the doctors have been trying to stabilize Alison's heart condition she has another month to go to get to full term knock, knock. hi Alison hi. how are we doing I feel good today. Don't you? In what way? They took some blood today. Take it, oh, oh, did they? They've been attacking And that, that doesn't it? Why is it Oh, no, it's not. There's hardly any blood in there to take. And they take well, some. they've taken it all now, have they? Oh, yeah, I think <laughs> so. I don't think there's any left. We we'll just cover you one. Yeah. So do we have a, a firm plan now for delivery, or we still... Well, they said, um, they said what they're going to do, they're going to sit down and decide um, what they think is the best way of getting the baby out, basically. Because obviously... Because you've had two heart, normal just, deliveries, yeah. haven't you? Yeah. But because of my heart, they really don't know what the best way is. OK. So they've got to think of a safe way for the heart. For oh, you pain. and... F yeah. No. She was quite quiet today, I thought. But um, I think it's just a combination of her being in for such a long time, possibly not sleeping as well. That's probably it, I think, and missing her, her two boys. And it's a long time for her to be in as well. And obviously she's anxious about, you know, what's going to happen, how she's going to have this baby. But no, I, I think she seems OK. Right, we'll see you over the weekend, OK? OK. Take care now. Bye, Bye. Uh, I find the midwives are brilliant because they explain it to me in a way I sort of, like, understand. We're possibly easier to talk to than cardiologists and, you know, maybe they can... We're a bit more, perhaps, down-to-earth with, with what we tell them, um, especially with, with Alison. I think she does need things explaining to her in quite simple terms. Yeah, I find sometimes it's really hard to understand because of my learning disabilities, so I find that really hard to find what's going on, really. After concerns over her latest scan, Lee was admitted to the ward last night. See, there's no need to worry. We do all the worrying. She's been assigned to midwife Emily. So Lee is deemed high risk at the moment for two reasons. One, because of baby, is measuring it a little bit small. And we're slightly concerned because she's had a bit of abnormal blood results and her blood pressure's been sitting a little bit higher than we'd like. It's 7 a.m. and the doctors have more test results. Oh, really? Knock, knock. Nice wake-up call. <laughs> How are you feeling, Swally? Blood pressure's up a little bit. Lots of protein in the urine as well. Plus the blood test, one of them is slightly elevated. And all that together is this blood pressure problem of pregnancy, preeclampsia. And the cure is always delivery. So it is the right thing to do. But if we couldn't induce you, you'd still need delivery, and that would be cesarean section. Yes. So definitely in the right place. See you later. Okay. Well done. Okay. Nice to see you. Sorry. No, Horrible okay. wake-up call. No, it's OK. <laughs> At the moment, she's late 34 weeks. So it's a little bit earlier than we'd usually like to induce someone. Anything less than 37 weeks is something we deem premature. It's a bit daunting. I'm, I'm not physically and emotionally prepared for labour yet, because it's, it's only 34 weeks. It's, only, it's actually six weeks away. So I'm not prepared for it yet, to be honest with you. I'd rather have a C-section. I'm sure she'd be in the mindset, just, just get it over and done with. But we want to give her the best chance, possibly, to get into labour herself. 
because the more we do and the more interventions we do, the more things may change and not necessarily for the better. Jamila is back for more tests. Thank you. This time to make sure her liver condition is confined to pregnancy and not a longer lasting problem. So you're the unlucky one who gets the early start then. <laughs> this is cold now, sorry. That's all right. As well as scanning the liver, they also take the opportunity to check the baby. So if the half all looks fine, Jamila, okay. So it's going to look like a baby now. There you go. A little face peeping out at you there, though. Oh, yeah. See the line there? Facing the same way. <laughs> the nostrils there as well. Oh, wow, say. yeah. <laughs> lips. See the top lip just coming out? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so it's uh, just going to get all the measurements now, Jamila, okay? Okay. But there's a concern about the baby's measurements. Thank you. So Jamila is sent to see specialist midwife, Sarah. Everything else has grown by the tummy. So it's unless the, the bilasses are starting to affect the baby, maybe. So potentially, we may have an issue with baby. But we don't know until we see, you can see the consultant tomorrow and we can make a plan from there. Okay, about the... the... About where we're going, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, thanks, Sarah. If you want me, you know where I am. I will. Okay. I'll give you a ring. Thank you so much. Take care, Jamila. Well, as Jamila knows, they can cause stillbirth. So it's just a case, really, of seeing what else is going on and keeping a close eye on this baby. I'm okay. It's just this up and down. The roller coaster started like this, and now it's more like this. The thing is, as a parent, it's a stressful time anyway, and when you're told bad news, it's even more stressful. I do wonder what else is going on. There's something else going on we need to sort out. And the last thing we want is a stillbirth. Not for her. Just four hours into Lee's induction, there's a problem. Baby's starting to show signs, they're getting a bit stressed. So we don't want to prolong this whole process. So, I mean, the idea is by breaking your waters mm -hmm. that we're taking away that cushion between the baby's head and your cervix. So to, by taking it away, the head will come down harder onto the cervix and hopefully make it dilate a bit, bit more and also released all the hormones that bring on contractions. All right. Lee has been joined by her husband, Eng Soon. All the way up through on that gas. All right. As the baby becomes more distressed, the doctors are called. Focus on your breathing. Focus on me. Doing really well. That's it. Come on. Me. Come on. This heart rate is still going down quite a lot. Yeah. Okay, and it's quite slow to recover as well. Okay, we need to deliver you. Okay, and the answer is we need to take you to the theatre and do cesarean section. Okay, so I'll get one of the neaters and we'll take you down. Yeah, okay. We'll be back in a moment. As we broke her waters, that cushion went between the baby and the cervix, and baby dropped down quite quickly, which shocked baby a bit too much, really. And because she wasn't even in established labour, choice was made to come straight to theatre. Lee's baby will be delivered prematurely at 34 weeks. Connected. 
All right, guys, here's a boy. Okay, they're just gonna give him some inflation breaths just to help him breathe, okay? But because he's little, you know, he's gonna struggle breathing on his own. So that's why we're giving him the breaths. He's little, but we expected him to be little. Okay. Cry, yeah. 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 Good. That's more like it. Yeah. He's doing really well, all right? He's doing all the things that we'd want him to be doing. So we're going to weigh him. Chances are they probably will take him over to neonatal unit, all right? Just because he is really little. But again, we were expecting that, weren't we? He's doing really well. So it's three pound thirteen. Three he's not needing much support. His saturation, so his oxygen levels are coming up really well, and he's got a lovely heart rate. He's nice and pink. Mm -hmm. All right. Do you want to see him? Yes, please. Yeah, meet your son. Hello. Congratulations. Just at the moment, so we can take him round to the neonatal unit, get him in a little incubator, yeah, and we'll look after him round there. And when you're able to come round, you can come round and see him then, yeah. All right, so don't you worry, we'll look after him. Okay. Okay. Yeah. He's gone to neonatal unit just so he can be helped with the breathing um, and just observed really to make sure that he is stable. This is the thing with labour and childbirth, you never know what's going to happen. Um, things can change like that. In this case, they did. Lee will need to spend time in recovery before she's able to visit her baby in neonatal. You've been here before, Bruce, haven't you? Several times now. Next morning, Jamila has returned with her husband to see what obstetric consultant Dr. Griffiths makes of her baby's growth. I think the midwife was slightly concerned about the scan results yesterday. Okay, sure. Growth looks like this. 95% uh, of all babies will fall in between those two outer lines. Yeah. Okay. And this is what babies done there, there, slight drop off. Yeah. But actually, in terms of slight off, you're talking millimeters. Okay. And essentially, it is a little bit of a tail off, but I wouldn't do anything about it. Great. Usually what you find is you, lots of these charts get these odd little bumps of going down and the next one okay. is back to normal Great. again. And it's one of the disadvantages of scanning every two weeks. It's yes. probably the earliest you can scan together. Yeah. Because and this was nine less. days apart, actually. It, it, exactly, yeah. 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 I did say if you weren't concerned, uh, I wouldn't be I'm concerned. Not concerned. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on, we're going this way. Oh, I love Mr Griffiths. He's just so practical. And I was saying to Mark, there's kind of this tug of war, I think, between the consultants who are practical and don't want to see you, Mommy. and the midwives who want to make sure everything is okay, Mommy. but they want to see you all the time. They just want to make sure everything is perfect for you and the baby, and I love them for that. We surveil their pregnancies and keep a lot of time and effort into helping them get these pregnancies to term, which is ultimately what we want. We want these babies healthy and happy. We want these mums happy and healthy, which is the ultimate goal of midwives anyway. Do you want me to try and adjust oh, that a bit please. for you? Let's see if we can... Oh, thank you. The day after her arrival, Carly's heart is still racing. All right, then. All right. All right, then. Take care now. Bye. See you soon. Bye. Which is a bit low for a baby point. Dr. Francis is with heart specialist Dr. Masani, who has known Carly as a patient since she was a child. She's tough as I want to think. Yeah, she's a great girl, actually, and she... She's very resilient, but she's obviously got a good systemic ventricle. That's the thing, that her systemic ventricle can cope with heart rates of 180, which is pretty impressive. So there's nothing we can do to sort of fix it electronically. It's, it's drugs. I mean, it's got to be beta blocker flaconide. And you're happy with flaconide, aren't you? Yeah, I have no problem with that. The next day, and the drugs bring Carly's heart rate down to a normal level. And she's visited by her mum, Jackie. Hi, Mama Rice. Hey, little bit, Charlie. Hi, yeah. God, you might be a nervous wreck. Hi, you OK? Mm -hmm. Nice to see you. So glad we're oh. seeing you. God, I'd be so worried about you. Oh, oh my God. Happy to stay down. All I've done is cry and pray and cry and pray. <laughs> cry some more. <laughs> you scared me so much yesterday. 
really scared me. I'm fine, you know, but you look, you look beautiful. You always look beautiful. We all brought as much color as you had in your face the other day. Yeah. Um, and to me, your lips look a little bit blue. Yeah, but you did say, you know, you've got a very unique heart. Unique it was, heart. He it, was it was back to front. It was inside out. It was full of holes. Everything and anything went wrong. And maybe five, ten years previous, you would never have survived. Yeah. All it is is this is pulse. It's got to stay down. But it's been at 72 all night now. They tried me on a new drug. Down, so the best thing is, you're in the hands of Dr. Masani, and you know, he is absolutely great. He's brilliant at what he does. You know, he's, he's at the top of his profession. Um, and you know, I got a crush on him. <laughs> you know? Yeah, because they've got such a brilliant heart unit on you. And yeah. they did tell Carly after shot Jaden, now listen, Carly, under no circumstances get pregnant. No circumstances, not pregnant. And she got pregnant. <laughs> but I'm gonna tie her legs together after this. You know, I think she thought her body clock was kicking off, and uh, she's got a little girl now. So. Stuck to my Oh God! <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna marry that man. <laughs> no, I've had the hot on this doctor now for like. Twelve years. Twelve years. Hi, <laughs> right, Carly. You're right. Thank you, Dr. Masani. I know you're busy. Everything's under control right Stay now. Down. I've yeah. got a couple of um, yeah. I've got a couple of patients to see, and it sounds like you've got your hands full. But we can get together over the weekend, yeah. and we'll have that chat. Brilliant. Because right. I know you're so busy, and I, I right. don't want to take up your time. I but uh, I, you know, you're always like God. I, I trust you, like you say. Oh, thank you so you much. That. Thank you. Like cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Talk to you soon. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank you. See you, later. you still got that lovely smile. <laughs> thank you. It's <laughs> alright. Love you. Love you too. I'll be done on Sunday. To that baby girl. If Carly's heart remains stable, she'll be able to go home in a few days. You're a wanted woman today. Oh no, <laughs> I'm always wanted. At 33 weeks <laughs> pregnant, Alison has recovered from pneumonia. Her heart condition has improved, but the team are still concerned about how it will cope in labour. I mean, all I know is there is talk of a C-section, and uh, the, I have heard. Even the latest I have heard is she's definitely, definitely got to come out of 36 weeks. I suppose it's hard because at the moment I don't want a C-section. But then if it's in the best interest of the baby, then I'll do whatever's best for her. Here we go then. Baby's heart beating away there nicely. Can you see that just in there? Yeah. And the little one's head is down at the moment. Oh, she's just beating. <laughs> Being a mum means the world to me because I didn't have a very good start in life. For the first, say, six and a half years, I didn't have a very nice life at all. So I suppose, in a way, I want to give to my children what I never had. And I suppose I want them to live the life I would have liked to live when I was a child. And it was just... Over a year ago, I lost a baby girl for a miscarriage. So this pregnancy is very, very special to me. At the moment, I think we just carry on as far as the pregnancy is concerned. Bye. The baby's scan today is very normal. So from a baby's perspective, we haven't got any major worries. If you're well enough to get all the way to 36 weeks, yeah then there might be the possibility of you having a normal delivery. That's the best we're going to aim for. Yeah. I think if we're looking at delivery before 36 weeks, then I think it's increasingly likely that we're going to be looking at cesarean section. Well, it's well. hard thinking, you know, oh, well, you know, this is, what, this is what's going to happen. You ain't got much choice in this, you know, and it's... I appreciate that. I understand the reason why, like, yeah. but it's, it's, it's hard. Mm -hmm. And I suppose, like, because, like, the other two are natural births, and but you were well then, and now just the extra burden of being pregnant has just tipped you into heart mm. failure. So we'll see how things are in between. Yeah.
If we could make Alison not pregnant, her heart function would improve considerably and certainly she'd get no worse and she could get quite sort of rapidly better within a week. As far as the long term concerned, I think her heart disease is such that she's probably going to need fairly major cardiac surgery to replace that abnormal valve that she has. It's 10.45 at night, and Jamila and husband Mark have rushed into the delivery suite. She's reached 39 weeks without her liver condition getting worse or needing to be induced. Are you still managing to focus? Yeah. Midwife Alison has examined Jamila and found her to be in the advanced stages of labour. How are you feeling about the bed? Are you happy to stay up a bit more? One more. Yeah. Oh. This baby's hurting me on the front. <laughs> oh. That's good news though, because at least it's not back to back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> she's making all the right movements. It looks like she's pushing with a contraction. So. Oh, it hurts. It hurts, it hurts, it hurts. Oh, <sighs> <laughs> oh, it hurts. Are you getting somebody else in the room? Just because the position you want to deliver in, it's sometimes it's good to have somebody to hold the leg for okay. me. All right, yes, please. I'm just going to gently examine you and make sure that you are fully. That's all right. Oh, it's nearly out. Oh, I can't. I can't. You're there, you're there, you're done most of it. You're nearly there now, so that, let's get this in here. Relax that leg. Just relax that leg. That's it, right there. Don't panic, it's going to burn like mad. Just take the gas, alright? And puff away on that gas like mad, alright? Okay, breathe that breathe 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 bre
But on the baby situation now, she's going to cope if I, my blood pressure drops too low or something, you know. Just hope, just hope it goes, goes a straightforward birth. Hello, baby. Oh, look at you. Hello, my darlings. Hello. Alison's pregnancy has reached 35 weeks with no further complications. Every other day, she's visited by her partner, Paul, and their two boys, Luke and Josh. Alison hasn't been able to go home for the last six weeks. The further she's allowed with her boys is to the hospital shops. Go over to the Thomas Burks then. I do try to explain to them um, what's wrong with mummy, but they don't really fully understand, you know, so I mean, so mummy's in the best place, you know, and let's go and see mummy. Just trying to sort of cheer up for that, for that couple of hours a week year, and it makes, it makes her smile, so that, that, that means a lot, you know. I love seeing my boys. My boys always cheer me up. They always cheer me up. Yeah, you have nice. a look at them ones, love. See, they're all the same. Yeah, it's hard to see Alison, uh, like Wade is now. It's really hard, and sort of, I sort of really feel for at the moment, and I wish she'd just get better soon. Oh. Thank you. team have got together in the last couple of days, the cardiologists, the obstetricians, and the plan is to deliver Alison's baby by cesarean section on Tuesday morning. I think she was hoping maybe she would just have this one naturally, but you know, I'm sure she understands that this is probably the best, best option for her. Good morning, Alison. Hi. How are you this morning? Not too bad. I just can't wait to see her now. Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to seeing her. Uh, well, because um, you've been in for six weeks, you know. And how do you feel about having a caesarean this time? Because I know... As I said, it's like, I'm not 100% happy. I was hoping to have the epidural, but they said this is far too risky. So they said it's going to have to be a C-section, which is a lot safer option. Yeah, I mean, I'll probably come to theatre with you on I, Tuesday because I'm working. And I'll be bringing the baby over to see you. And you can have her on your chest for the whole of the time the operation's going on. But then because you're probably going to go back to cardiac intensive care, yeah. aren't you? That's the plan. Yeah, that's... Because you're going to go back yeah. there afterwards, they wouldn't be able to have the baby there with you. Right. So the baby will go into the nursery in special care. But, you know, you will definitely see her the minute she's born and you will hold her as soon as possible. So yeah, I will sort that would that be out. nice just so I can... I mean, she's bound to be anxious. I think anybody would be anxious. So, you know, she's obviously um, doubly anxious about the problems she's got. But, um, no, I, I was quite happy with her today. I think she's, she fully understands everything that's going on. And, no, I, I think she's quite looking forward to it, really, to seeing her baby. Let's go and see baby. Let's see our little one, OK? Yep, Have we thought about her name? Yep, Oliver. Oliver. Lee is now well enough to visit her baby. Thank you. I'm Helen. I'm looking after your little one. Oliver, is that right? Yeah, Oliver. Yeah, Oliver. Just over here. Is he okay? Hey, so. Right there. How's that? Yeah. Is, is, is he okay? Yeah, he's lovely. When he first came, mm. all right, he just needed a little bit of help with his breathing with the oxygen. Yeah. So he was just getting a little bit of oxygen, that was just helping. But I've taken him off his oxygen and I did his nappy change about 10 o'clock. And yeah. he's been just breathing on his own, just in air, and he's doing really nicely. <laughs> he's smiling. Yeah, he looks like he's smiling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. Did you want to have a little cuddle? No, not enough. No. This is so tiny. I'm a bit scared oh. that I'll just break him. Oh, you won't break him. Do you want to touch him then? Yeah. Can you manage to put your hand through there? <laughs> it's good for him to know that you're there and to hear your voice and to feel your touch. It's so cute. 
baby Oliver will have a short stay in special care before being allowed home with mum and dad. Labour ward, Ms. Rice weekend. And is it your first baby? And when are you due? So this is your fourth baby. Having reached 37 weeks, Carly is in to be induced. She's joined by her mum and her partner, Matthew. Hello, Hi, you all right? Have right? you got your notes with you? Yes, I've got them. Ah, no. So what we'll do is we'll just settle you in at the top. And then the general plan with Carly for her birth and her labour is to have an early epidural so she's quite comfortable and she's not in too much pain which is going to put stress on her heart and just to let her labour normally but ideally we don't want her to be in labour for too long. So we'll leave you on this for a little bit. Carly is being delivered early to avoid the risk of her going into spontaneous labour without medical support. Her heart is quite unpredictable so we need to ensure that all staff are available if something did happen. So we're trying to time her induction and try, try and time her birth sort of in the daylight hours when there's people about and on hand. So you need the consultant obstetricians, consultant anaesthetists, and as well as the cardiologists being involved as well, just in case something does happen. At 4 a.m., Carly is given a fast-acting induction gel, hoping she'll go into labour around midday. Okay, pop that into the bottom. So this is just the gel, okay? Well done, doing really well. Okay, fab. Right. All right, yeah. so we'll leave you on the monitoring for a little bit longer. Yeah. Just to check that the baby's happy with what we've done. Okay. And then I'll take you off that and you can go back to sleep. Okay, okay. Until it all kicks off. <laughs> So in six hours, what we'll do is we'll re-examine you because yeah. that's how long it takes to it's sort of yeah. all dissolved in, really. So if we re-examine you and then from that, hopefully we'll be able to break your waters yeah. and then the labour will commence. Okay. So we're hoping it's going to be enough Hello. and we'll have a baby today. Hello. It's the day of Alison's C-section. If you can sign your consent on there, yeah. come in. The cesarean section itself is a, is a fairly straightforward operation. The risks for Alison are all related to her heart. We have to be very careful with her anaesthetic, so there is that potential for tipping her into heart failure just by virtue of the anaesthetic itself. Um, when she delivers her baby, there's quite significant changes in the circulation and that could push her into heart failure. So yeah, the potential for risk is, is very high. Alison's partner, Paul, will be allowed into theatre to support her. This is really scaring me, you know, because I, I, to see one have an operation, I've never seen an operation before, you know. I mean, it's like, it hasn't hit me until now, until the day. I mean, I am strong for you and I, but sometimes I do, like, break down and, I mean, I feel a bit now, you know, but... I know it's easier said than done, but just... I'm trying. I'm really not trying. No, no, you're right. You're doing very well. Hey, darling. I'm here, sir. Okay, don't lie backwards now. I need to keep on your side. Okay? A second midwife, Tatiana, is assisting Helen with looking after Alison and the baby. She's kicking. She's all ready. Yeah. 
Allison is in one of the main operating theatres. OK. To be close to emergency cardiac services. Even for midwives, for me, after 10 years, it's the first case I have to come in the main theatre. So imagine how it is for her. OK, there, Alison. Yeah. I'm really nervous, Alison. Alison. Yeah. Helen is here. Okay. Alison asked me if she could have her baby skin to skin as soon as she's out, so I said that I hope it's going to be possible, so hopefully they're both going to have this nice moment. Nothing unusual. It's going well. I think it's going well. Are you going to be alright? I will be a bit tired. Come on. What braver I am, are you? Not long. Perfect. She was born very quickly and in a very good condition for her gestation. Perfect. I can't see much of her at the minute. Is everyone around? Yes. I can't see her at the minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh. Congratulations. Oh. Make a lot of noise. Oh. Shall I just take her and put her skin to skin with her? Please, oh, yeah, do, yeah. Yeah, it would be nice to have a nappy on, but hey-ho. There we are. Okay, darling. Just take her. I think everything's gone fine. Really good. And it's a lovely baby, isn't she? She's just over five pounds, okay? It's good size, yeah. We couldn't expect any better. Fantastic. So the baby is going to stay with us, not going to know natal unit as you saw, because she was born in a perfect condition. I feel a bit sick. What, you feel sick? Okay, it's okay. So I feel yeah. really sick. It's okay. Just... I feel really ill, like my head hurts. Like... Okay, Shall I take a baby? Yeah? Okay. Alison's blood pressure has dropped to nearly half the normal level. The anaesthetic team give her a drug to bring her blood pressure back up. But as the C-section is completed, Alison's heart rate suddenly accelerates. She is checked by the cardiac anaesthetist. Right at the end, her heart rate became very fast, so we got her reviewed by the cardiac anaesthetist. She seems very happy with Alison, so we were able to transfer her to coronary care, where she's going to stay probably for a couple of days. I mean, it's obviously a stressful time for Alison and Paul, and they did both need support, so I think between us, Tatiana and I managed to keep everything calm and I think they were pleased with the outcome. It's over 12 hours since Carly's induction began. Yeah, it's better. My freaking back is killing. There hasn't been any progress. So a second, stronger acting gel has been given. She's just been bouncing on the balls. She's, um, 
She's just, she's, I don't know, she's tired now. Midwife Ruth Leonard is coming on shift. Hello, Carly. Hello, I'm Ruth. I'm here for tonight. How are you doing? I just don't know what to do for her now. It's, it's, it's heartbreaking watching her now. Did you sleep last night? No. 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 We were with, have you been here since yesterday as yeah, well? Yeah, last night. Oh, I don't want to do it myself. We're just as they bad as each other. Yeah. Do you mind if I have a little feel of your tummy first? Yeah. But you'll, I know you'll have to lie on the it's bed. Fine, yeah. If that's all right, just for yeah. a quick... I'll give my hands a wash. Yeah. Big deep breaths. Your cervix is still the same yeah. as it was when Hannah examined you earlier on. It's, I would say, maybe one centimetre. It's, it would be difficult to break your waters. I was just hoping you would be about three or four centimetres. With the pain relief, it is a bit early yeah. for an epidural because it's going to sort of keep you bedridden. Um, and if you're lying down, your labour's going to be slower than it will when you're walking about. So as soon as we can, as soon as your, your cervix opens up a bit more and you show signs that you're going into labour, I will get you an epidural as soon as possible. Any questions? No, just a bit gutting. Yeah. We want it to crack on. She wants to have the baby, don't you? I'm gonna be a stubborn little thing, yeah. No doubt. With labour some way off, Carly is left to sleep for an hour. Don't have any needles in there because she's already got an in All right, see you later. Bye, Carl. Bye. I love you. Love you. Okay, Carly, sleep well and just give me a shout if you need anything. Um, she's getting a bit fidgety and restless at the moment. She won't be able to sleep, but at least she'll be able, to, maybe able to lie down and close her eyes. And hopefully, um, if she does that, labour will progress quicker. Before Ruth is able to help, Carly's baby has already been born. And your mum's not here. Go back you go. Good girl. Give her a cuddle. <laughs> Wipe down, that's the cord cut. Oh, you didn't get your epidural. No, but the worry is too, I deliver the too quick. That's good stuff, that paracetamol mm. then. <laughs> shocked. Really shocked. Mega quick. <laughs> She's absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> Don't know, I left her to sleep and uh, buzzed and she was standing by the side of the bed and baby came out. How many my mother missed her? They both missed it, didn't they? I know. No, no, you're joking. Oh, did you not get? Just now, just now. Oh my God, she's joking. Oh my God, what? Oh my God, let me see it. It's pushed out for the army on no stitches, no pain really. Are you okay? Yeah. All right. Have a sit down there. Hey, baby girl. Okay. Yeah, shocked. Yeah. Well, you will be. You will be. 
Oh, so we'll have a quick half lager in the pub, looking to get you a pizza or some fish and chips or something. Yeah, I thought, my God, my God, Carly Ann. Look, I said, I need, she's come in, she's come in, I stood in there, felt like I needed a pool, and she just come out and delivered it on my own, I called her. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my poor baby. So proud. Shocked, just shocked, shocked, yeah, you know. Okay, can't believe it. After all the planning, no, ep no early epidural, no breaking of waters, it all happened very naturally and all very quickly, which is good. And her heart has managed OK. Oh, I'm so proud of Carly. I am so, oh, but you missed so, it. I missed it. I'm going to shoot myself in the foot, in the head, everywhere. So if you have another baby now, don't no. leave her. No more. No. We're going to call her last one now. She's gorgeous, Carly. Well done. Congratulations. Carly and baby Amelia will both spend the next two days on the maternity unit, being observed by the cardiologists and the midwives. <laughs> this is it now. This is it. <laughs> After 48 hours in coronary care, Alison is well enough to be reunited with her baby. And your daughter? Yeah. Want to be parted again, eh? Yeah, oh, I right. know I've done it. Oh, thank you. Oh, I don't know. Oh, my baby. Oh, it's in balance in your baby. In a few days, Alison will be allowed to go home with her family to return for a heart operation in three months' time. So she behaving? Uh, no. She's 48 hours after the birth, Carly is also free to go home with baby Amelia. She's so sweet, isn't she? So there's going to be no more now? No, no that's it. Good. Yeah. Okay, take right. care. Ta All bye, bye, bye. Take care, bye-bye. Carly will only need a heart checkup in six months' time. 